I'm Colin and Knight. I'm Stan. And you're watching Heritage Hip Hop. Peace, everybody out there. Every so often, history repeats itself and things go around in circles. And we have a face on here that you've seen a few times already. And this time, the elevation and growth of his character and music not only is going to be showcased, but he brought a friend along with him. Introduce yourselves to the people one more time. So now, uh, I go by the name of Stan. Uh, as y'all know, just Stan changed the name. Uh, and I'm calling it a night. And they are. Oh, we're not a we, group. We, we're not a group. Yeah, we're yeah, just, not a group. <laughs> we're just family. They are who they are. We're just family. We're a unit. <laughs> so let's get to business and let's talk about it. First of all, congratulations on the project. Thank Not you. to be taken lightly. Available now, everybody, on all music streaming outlets. But let's really get into the heart of what it is to be a creator and bring in creative forces together. Now, this is the team that brought y'all the classic Black Sheep that's on the album. Unplugged. Unplugged. And if anybody knows me, when I first heard Black Sheep, even the Dave Chappelle sample in there, it brought a new type of energy that most hip hop doesn't have today. That's gamesmanship and fun. Everybody's into the, either the, the drill or the lazy beat. The attributes of hip hop and not the feeling and sound and character of hip hop. How did y'all both take the creative forces of that song and say, you know what? Let's just make, it a, make an album and, and see if people catch on and get what we're saying. Uh, well, even like the, the whole Unplugged era, uh, I was with him the entire time and I was I was there for most of the writing process and it's been always, it's always been a, an idea of stands to go back and forth with somebody. And the that beat, that beat to Black Sheep was like, it was, it was fished around to, to, to other people, you know, they didn't, they didn't necessarily have the, the idea that we had to do for it. And, you know, a lot, a lot of people was going a simpler route with it. So the beat was given to Stan and we decided to uh, go back and forth on it. The whole song happened in my room. The whole, write, the whole writing process. Yep. So you yeah. actually used old school tactics, which is basically not to send beats over emails and all that. Y'all actually vibe over each other in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How important was that in making not only the song, but in this project that you put out as well? Um, the with, with that song and with that project, it just shows the um, the chemistry that me and Stan had. We, we grew up since sixth grade. Yeah, that's that's, that's really just us. Yeah, like, they, like, there was no thought into that. That's out, even outside of music. That's just me and him. So. One hundred percent natural. Yeah. And like our, our first our first common uh the, the first person that we the first artist that we had in um that we had liked in common was, was Eminem. So and from 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 then on, I learned that with him making music, making beats, he's always sharing, always have you know ideas, and we always rapping to each other so it just, it just made sense so y'all have no how old are y'all 19 19 about to be 20 years more so y'all have known each other since 10 11 years old yeah. so there's a camaraderie there that most hip-hop artists don't have mm -hmm. so growing up together you know each other's nuances your likes your dislikes and you form a kind of respect because through knowing each other and having that respect you know how to approach a person even if it's to test a person, you know what can be said and how they'll take it and you know how to marry the respect and the business part of getting the job done. Yep. Mm -hmm. How does having that respect and that history make your music better than those who just get together and just collab on beats? That goes back to chemistry. <laughs> But chemistry is a word that people just throw out sometimes. You know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, yeah, we got chemistry. We get on the mic, I just know what he's going to say, which mm -hmm. is bullshit because a lot of people overcut each other. Yeah. So chemistry is more, is deeper than the word. It's also a vibe and a rhythm. Mm -hmm. So how does that vibe, how does that rhythm aid in the beats, aid in the rhymes, aid in the performances that makes your connection deeper and much more expressive? 
Oh, it's like you said. Like uh, we grew up together, so I know what he like. I know what he don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm. I, I sit. I sit with him. You know, mo- most of the times when he's making a beat or when he's constructing it. So. And and um, me, I'm I'm a lot more adventurous, and he's not afraid to come with me. So <laughs> when I when I when I decide I want to do something weird, like put. Um, a frog sound in the beat because nobody else is doing it. Right. <laughs> he with it and it, I'm dope, so. <laughs> Magic happens. Okay. The most creative side of being different is the fact that you conquer people's fears for them without mm-hmm. even trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really don't think about that. When we think about great producers, and we're going to touch on your production side a little later. Mm-hmm. When we think about great producers, they always find a way to elude fear with new feelings. Mm-hmm. For one example, no one can touch Dr. Dre on drums. Dr. Dre has the most clearest theatrical drums that mm-hmm. you hear mm-hmm. in hip-hop history. Mm-hmm. The RZA has the most adventurous ear when it comes to making sounds and beats. Mm-hmm. If you listen to Bring the Ruckus, in the Wu-Tang movie, it says he put the mic under a mop bucket, smacked the bucket, and that's the sound that you hear in the beat. Okay. Even if you listen to Knife Wonder, Fruity Loops, wow. his drum patterns are ones that makes, you know what I'm saying, the beats stand out. I'm not focusing on beats, like I said, we'll come to that later. I'm focusing on you two as individuals yet together. The creative part of sound from you comes from your voice tone and your clear expression. What comes through when you rhyme is not your voice tone, but the clarity and your calm aggression. Mm-hmm. How does clarity and aggression come together to make dope tracks? Um, well, we have, me and Stan, we have different, different styles. Um, when, it, when, it, when it comes to like each of the songs, I try to like approach them very differently, but what I want, what I would like to get a, get across is what I'm saying, like the the, the whole the the rhyme schemes, the the patterns, um, about and just just basically you know amplifying my my voice, you know, to to be heard. Um, Stan, see, he has Stan has between making the beat and his uh his voice. So I'm basically trying to, for me, it's more than what you're saying. I've learned that harshly. Um, It's more in the sense of how you say something, how good does this sound. Like now that that I'm more into producing than I was, I'll say before Unplugged started. Unplugged was the start of my change uh back when i was just rapping i'm just coming up with dope flows coming up with dope flows something to say now it's more all right i know you're trying to get this point across but how can i get it to an audience and force them to listen like want to listen to what i'm saying so now it comes to like how do i put it I gotta come up with something catchy. I gotta come up with something more appealing to yeah, the ears. And also keeping in mind with you know what's popular now. Exactly. And how to how to put how to be original and, and still and still give an audience the, what they yeah. want. Yeah. So that raises an interesting point, and the point is this: as growth happens. With most MCs, their voices change, their style change, and then they fight the norm. I'm supposed to make a song like this. I'm yeah. supposed to make a song like that. I'm yeah. supposed to do this. In today's hip hop, y'all will not be considered polished. <laughs> you will be mm-hmm. considered development. And when I listen to most underground or unsigned or indie artists, the reason why everybody says all the music today sucks is because at this time, if you were signed, you would be an artist development. And people will pick the beats and tell you how to do this and tell you how to do that and tell you how to do that. And they don't appreciate how the artist grows into who they are when they come out rather than how they sounded and got there. 
Mm -hmm. For today's hip hop, you have to really take the time to acknowledge where the MC is, the producer is, and then walk the journey with them. And, and you're, you gain fans through experience rather than through gain fans through releases. Exactly, and that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you touched on that. That's what I want to do with my music overall. Like, for me, it's never been about quality. Of course you want, like, the, 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 the best about what you put, but I feel like with my music, I just want to show people where struggle comes from. Like, I don't know um, a lot of the stuff I, 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 I want to know production-wise, engineer-wise, anything musically. At the end of the day, Dr. Dre is still learning, and he's considered one of the greatest. And I'm not the guy to, I'm not just trying to show greatness, I'm trying to show Stan. Stan is not perfect. So I want to show my struggle. I want to show um, how to get like to that, because at the end of the day, when I look back 30 years, I want to look at where I came from and where I'm at now. And I want people to, and, I want my audience to come with me. Yeah, and as, a, as, the, as the project, like, when you hear it, like this, this is where we, this is where we did it. We didn't have no studio, no, you know, big time equipment. They're like we can, it, it still shows that the job can still be done. Exactly. It's not about what you have, it's how you use it, it's creativity at the end of the day.